Right, we're recording. So, thought I'd make a LEGO City tutorial on how to speedrun the level. And just hopefully, it should inspire some more people to play it, or you know, just help people get sub fours more consistently. Um, so, let's get into it. Uh, first things first is going to be glitches. Uh, two that you need to learn. Um, well, to do this level. First is going to be the droid kit animation cancel. Um, just get a clip of it right now. Okay. Um, so it basically just allows you to shoot um, while you're moving um, and also shoot a lot faster. Um, so to do it, you want to shoot and then swap characters back and forth. So start with on the Xbox controller, that would be X, then I do right, left, but you can do left, right, whatever works better for you. Um, yeah, 90% of improving your time on this level will be mastering this glitch and its use in the level. Um, so you want to be able to do it while moving consistently and do it effectively to land your shots. Um, if you're going to use a controller for it, which I recommend you do, I recommend using the triggers instead of the bumpers. Um, I used bumpers for the first sort of um, like few records that I did, and then the left bumper fell off. So, yeah, use the triggers. It's it's better. Um, the next one is going to be utilizing the triple jump, which is quite common in. Lego Star Wars speedruns, I think. Um, so it'll be about the 250 mark in the run. So if you watch here, one, two, three, yep. Uh, and there's another one right there, one, two, three. So to do that, um, you want to double jump and then press X to activate a Jedi Slam and then swap characters while you're in like the little upward peak of it. So when you first activate a Jedi Slam, you move upwards just a little bit. So you go up really fast for a very short amount of time. Um, and if you swap characters in that little window, you, a new character will inherit the momentum of going up quite fast without the downward acceleration from the animation of the Jedi Slam, which allows you to essentially get a third jump. That um, allows us to reach up here to get that done. Uh, we only use it, I think, twice in the level, maybe three times if you use it on sort of the, the other building across the map. But yeah, it, we do need you. You do need to learn it uh, and get decent with it. Um, the next thing is going to be extras. So before you go into a run, you want to make sure that you've got the following list of extras on, unless you're doing no extras. But yeah, uh, so super gunk. Perfect Deflect, Explosive Blaster Bolts, Force Pull, Super Jedi Slam, Deflect Bolts, Super Blasters, Fast Force, Invincibility, and Fast Build. Um, there's going to be a full list of those in the description, but when in doubt you can just chuck all of them on, um, and it will effectively have the same result. Um, but that is the, what you need at a minimum. Um, I know Super Gonk seems like a bit of a meme, um, but when I'm right cycling, the next character is a gonk droid. So I think in that, I, d I don't know if it saves time or not. It feels like it does to me, um, but we'll see. Um, so let's get into the run. Uh, the run is going to be uh, the world record 343. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to do a commentary over it and explain what's going on. So, character selection, you want a force user and a droidica. So, force user is player one. Pick your favourite, can be any of them. I like using the Emperor. Um, could be Mace Windu or even one of the ghosts if you really wanted to. Um, or even a custom. So, do whatever. They should be player one. Droidica should be player two. Um, and you'll see why in just a second. Um, So right at the start, you want to activate those four flowers, 
the pots of flowers here. And on console, it doesn't allow you to switch characters in the first three or so seconds. So that's why I add in the, the slam there, is to sort of um, just use up that time a little more effectively than just standing around waiting for it to happen. It makes it a little bit more smooth for the droid to just come out and start shooting this house, which is what you want to do immediately. So, I don't know if you can make that out, but there is a tree up there. That can be quite annoying to take out later on. If you got lucky, you can take it out here, or there is a, a shot in a minute that I recommend to do that. You want to go straight through the house and shoot the tractor house out and activate these windmills here straight away. Um, don't worry about these guys. Uh, if you kill if you kill them, great. If not, you might be able to get them later, but you don't actually need them for completions. If you're going for consistency, so like if you're if you're just going for sub five or even like sub rushmore, which is I think four forty eight, um, then you can kill these with one slam and pick up about three k, three and a half k. But if you're killing civilians the whole run, you don't actually need it to get completions. So if if we're trying to go as fast as possible here, you want to leave them. Um, you want to straight away activate the windmills because that allows you to destroy these lamps, like so. Um, I recommend taking that one out here with a shot like that. And then that shot there was to take out the tree that I mentioned earlier. So build the tractor, start heading around, get as tight a line as possible here. Um, move it around. So this bit I actually mess up on this run. Um, and leaves this here. You can quite consistently destroy a whole house if you shoot the pillar and then the door. That usually is enough to take it out. Although on this run it wasn't for some reason, so I lose about a second there. I can go back and take it out. Um, you want to make sure that you clear this area out while you're moving along here, as well as this bit here. You build this. Uh, there is a little clip there, but it's basically just keep moving forwards as you build, once you're building the thing. Um, just keep moving forwards, you'll go straight through it. Um, put a shot in there. You'll see there, you'll see a stud. Um, we don't actually need to collect it. Again, it's the same thing as the Womp Rats. Uh, we don't need it to get completions, and it wastes about two seconds if we try to collect it. So we just skip it and hope for the best. Uh, sometimes you will get runs that don't complete, which isn't the end of the world. Uh, so make sure you take out this lamp and this tree here. Um, if you don't, it's a bit annoying to get later on. Uh, you can fire a couple of extra shots in to try and take out some want rats if you want. This bit, there are some bins that contain the bits of the ambulance. You can leave bits of the house for now, but make sure you get all the bins uh, as you move. Let's build the flowers, come across, and try and take out as much as you can of that bit up there. While you're doing it, as well as most of the Tauntaun cage here. You can leave the, those trees for now, as long as you get them on the way back down. So, as soon as you enter the ambulance, about 102 is pretty good. I think the fastest I ever had was a 1 minute. Um, obviously, that you can get in a bit faster, but you have to measure destruction and speed in this. Uh, when considering the speed of the run. So, I've had about... I've had maybe one or two runs that have been one minute, um, and that's just about as fast as you can go, really. Um, that's a good sort of time to measure how fast you're going. Uh, you want to take these as tight as possible, and move around to here. So you, I don't know if you caught that, but basically, as you're leaving the ambulance, uh, press X to sort of slash down. And land a bit quicker. Um, yeah. So there were some fences down here. Um, try to take those out. That's what those shots were for. Was to take the fences out here. So there you need to fire two shots. One to take the tree. And one to blow up the bounty hunter box. And this section is quite hard to do perfectly. Which is what happened in this run. That This bit here is why this run is so good. Um... So you want to take out this side of the house, while you're in here shoot that bit, 
and then get out the door cleanly. You will need to be the Emperor to get out the door cleanly, or... But the droidic is too wide to fit through the door, so you have to switch characters to get through it. But that was done very cleanly. Make sure you take out the pillar. Um, so, we actually started forcing the house at a 129 here, which is a very, very fast pace. Although, you could probably pace about a 126 on a really, really good run. Um, as long as you get that and a really good start. So, as soon as you're building the house, you want to go through it, you can clip through just a little bit there and start building the Lego sign. Uh, this is the best route I've found through the Lego sign. Um, I don't know if it is the best, but it is very good, very fast. Um, it's very easy to mess up here. I think the 348 had a screw up here. Um, that red bar is quite troll to get on. You have to sort of angle it quite funny. That is where the majority of mistakes occur in this section. Yeah, so make sure you destroy the Tonton cage and make sure uh, you get all the trees that are left here. And also, there are some yellow, like, patched windows. Sort of this texture here that, that, that are usually there, and they need to be destroyed. So make sure you do that. So that shot on the Lego sign gives about 10k. You can shoot it earlier, but it doesn't give the studs for some reason. Um, so that's why I do it after the building. Uh, it just makes it more consistent so that you get this chain of studs up here. It's about 10k. So 220 is a very good time for the Tauntaun. Um, you probably get a little bit faster if you're lucky, but... See. So this bit here, make sure you take out the thing on the roof and just basically follow what's on screen. So do the windows between the flowers. Take that out. Make sure you get all the fence down there. If you destroy a fence, it will destroy the two fences either side of it as well. So you can aim shots like that. You only need to pull one lever um, and you can like switch out the animation. Here's the triple jumps from before. Uh, make sure that you get both bits of, I think it's a, a Wookiee cap. Um, make sure you get that on there. The windows are actually optional. Uh, I did them by mistake in this run. Uh, this was a very sloppy section. but um, They are optional. Um, if you're about 1k shy at the end, once you get off the thing, you can go over and get them. But yeah, uh, Make sure you move it out the way. Uh, because it's directly on the path of the orange car at the end. So this bit, take out the side bit here, and then clear all the trees off of the flower patch. So, rem learn how to do the flower patch would be, if you can get the flower patch done consistently, that is um, like a big chunk of time, in my opinion. Uh, the way I remember it is two, then three, then two, uh, then three two, three, and then four at the end. Uh, it's just better to do it like that and then turn around and shoot it like that um, than just sit around and wait for it to start giving studs, which is something I see done quite a lot. Um, make sure you get all of them and then just bolt it down here, turn around, shoot it a few times once you're down at about this point, and it should hopefully give you studs. Our stud count is going up, even though we haven't collected these yet, so that means that it's working. Yeah, so at this point here, if you've got more than 930,000, your run will complete. If not, it won't. Um, so in this run, it completes a little bit early. Um, but you can actually get completions way earlier than I got on this run as well. Uh, the 344 Unproven that I got completed like up here um, which is why it was so fast it was a complete outlier compared to all my other runs it was a really good pace and it was it had a really really high stud count which is why it completed up here and it, it sort of came out the blue um, so I wasn't recording for it but you can get completions up here but they're very very rare um, usually it'll be around around that point um, so yeah. 
and 343. Um, so that's the general overview of the run. Um, there are a few more things that you can do to save time, mostly with two controllers. Uh, so, for example, if you can get really good with two controllers on the Lego sign, that could save a lot of time. Like, do, doing this with two controllers would save so, so much time, but I'm, like, I'm nowhere near that skilled with the two controllers to do that. Um, it's the same thing with, um, like, the ambulance ride, stuff like that, right? Instead of wasting all this time, you could be out here and destroying stuff. Um, same thing with the ton tons stuff like that. Uh, even the flower patch as well. If you had two controllers on it, one guy doing it over here and one guy doing it here, it would save quite a lot of time. Um, and you might even be able to push sub three with it. Um, at least like if you get quite good at it. But I think the, the the limit I think for one controller is probably around the three thirty. The mid 330s. Um, you might be able to push sub 330 with it. If, um, but 330x is definitely possible. So, yeah, go on. Um, I, think that, I think that just about covers everything. Um, any questions, leave them in the description. I will try my best to respond. And yeah, thanks for watching, I guess.